Have you ever wanted to do a bullet journal theme that you felt was a little outside of your current skill set? Or maybe even just one that you thought might be a little bit too ambitious? Well, my recommendation is to give it a go anyways, because that is exactly what happened with this month's theme. Hello and welcome to my October bullet journal setup. For the month ahead, we are going with a witches slash witchcraft theme. And I feel like it kind of ended up being a little bit more celestial than I initially intended. But we have moon witches, right? Moon witches are a thing. Admittedly, I'm not like super knowledgeable when it comes to witchcraft and witchy things. I love the aesthetic. I think it is 100% on point. But my general witchcraft understanding is not necessarily up to date or up to scratch. With that being said, I did find heaps of very awesome inspiration online for today's setup. And I've got links to the pieces from other creators that I used in particular when thinking about how I wanted to set up today's layout. The decoration that I'm working on at the moment, for instance, is inspired by Poison Apple Print Shop, who did a table runner with a very cool moon design. To do the moons though, I didn't want to have to spend a whole bunch of time drawing, so I instead decided to use my sticky notes that I got from Stationery Pal and just cut out the size that I needed. This made for an easy decorative option to use on all of the pages of the layout, and it's nice because each of the sticky notes has the same design, so it easily makes the pages of the layouts tie together. Another thing that I did to make the layouts look cohesive was put the same border on every page. So you can see we have the little partial circle cutouts from each of the corners, which was something that I found in a lot of the inspiration pictures that I was looking at. As is typical, Past Jess also decided that she was going to colour in large sections of black with the smallest pen that she had. Admittedly, this was kind of necessary because I wanted to go around the little star details that we had in that design. But it certainly did add to the time taken. From first touch of the pen to final erasings, the projects list that we're working on here took about 35 and a half minutes. But as usual, that time doesn't include sketching out time or idea generation time. I know we've talked about it before, but I do like to tell you guys the amount of time it takes me to set up these layouts, because when you're looking at a time lapse, it can seem like things come together super quickly, which is often very much not the case. When it comes to October monthly themes, I'm always very torn between doing something Halloween-y, which is obviously what we went with this year, or doing something birthday related. My birthday's in the middle of October, and this year in particular I turned 31, so I was very tempted to do a kind of birthday-esque theme with like a cake that had 31 candles, so that it's like, heh heh, I'm turning 31, but there's also 31 days in the month. Obviously, didn't happen, but that's okay, I'm sure I can do the same thing next year and just leave a candle off or something. <laughs> One of the reasons that I was quite excited to do this theme for October was because I really wanted to use this lettering style. I've been wanting to use it for ages, I think it's super cool. And I do have a separate video where I show you the full alphabet for this one. As can be expected, that one, along with any other videos related to this setup, can be found linked in the description box below. Another thing that I was very excited to use in my October setup were the Colero Fine Tech Gold Watercolor Paints. My paint pans are looking a little messy, but these paints are absolutely gorgeous. I love every single time I use them, I honestly don't use them enough. They are super gold, super shiny, and they were exactly what I wanted for this theme. Those, along with any other materials that I used in this setup, can be found in the description box below. But now we're heading on over to the right hand side of the spread and getting into the cover page. This one wasn't inspired by any one creator in particular, but I do want to give a shout out to Magical Plans over on Instagram, just because their feed is so beautiful. And honestly, they're the reason that I put witches and witchcraft into the poll for this October setup. By poll, I'm talking about the fact that my patrons get to pick my theme every month. So although Haunted House was a close second, witches and witchcraft did win out. Around the edge of this semicircle though, you can see I'm putting in a border that's made to look like rope. This one I do have a tutorial video on, which again, linked in the description box. But it's actually easier than you might think it is, and I think it looks really visually effective. To actually get the guidelines and eventually the penning in on this one to be circular, I made use of my Helix Circle Stencil, which just makes doing circular things so much easier. But the general design that I'm going for on this one is kind of like a wheel of the year, but I'm not going to be filling it in with the typical things that you might find on a wheel of the year. For instance, the symbols of the star signs or the different pagan holidays like the summer solstice, the winter solstice, etc. Instead, I decided to use washi tape. 
I have this super gorgeous washi tape set from the washi tape shop and I haven't gotten around to using it yet so I thought it would be fun to use in my October setup because it ties into the color palette that I'm building so mainly black and gold. Before putting that washi tape down you can see I'm just going and preparing my border by coloring in a little bit more with some black. This is so the washi tape doesn't have to butt up exactly against the rope border. I can cut it a little bit further out from that just to save myself some time. And honestly time saving was something I kind of needed in this because I thought that using the washi tape would make it take less long than drawing things out but I'm kind of wondering if it wouldn't have just been quicker to draw stuff. Okay, to be fair, it probably would have taken longer to draw stuff in because I would have had to figure out what I wanted to draw and then sketch it in, draw it out, yada yada yada. But using washi tape was not as quick as I thought it was going to be. And this is mainly because the washi tape was black, so I couldn't see through it to cut around the parts of the design that I'd already put in. I did eventually figure out a couple of tricks, like folding the washi tape along the straight edges or pre-cutting it before I put it down to butt up against those straight edges but actually getting it to line up with the rope border was pretty tricky. I did also at times accidentally cut a little bit too much of the washi tape away, but thankfully this could be easily fixed just by coloring in those sections with my micron pens. Thankfully though, the second washi tape that I used was a white one, so transparent enough that I could actually see my black line work through the washi tape itself. That one was way easier to cut to size, but I am still glad that I used the combination of the white and the black, because I think it adds a little bit more visual interest than I would have had just using the white washi tape over the full design. We know that Jess is a sucker for contrast. While the white washi tape was a lot faster to put in, the learning curve associated with putting the black washi tape down did increase the amount of time taken on the cover page. So from first touch of the pen to final erasings, this one took about 48 minutes, making it the longest part of today's setup. Originally I was intending on leaving the spaces between each of the washi tape sections just white, but because I had overextended with my pen a couple of times, I decided to go in with the gold paint. Plus the gold is just pretty, so why not? Once the gold was in though and the wheel was finished, it was then time to add some additional decoration. Another element that I included on the pages of today's setup were these ribbon designs. These ones are also a lot more simple to do than they probably look, so you just start with one kind of curving, winding line and then put another curving line that goes over the top. So it effectively intersects that original line every time that it changes direction. At the end of the ribbon, you just join the two lines with a curve. And then to add in the details, you just use thin lines that happen at every intersection. Hopefully that kind of makes sense along with the visual that we have here. But as mentioned, it is a lot more straightforward than it ends up looking. Another part of the layout that I feel looks very visually effective. The final touches on this one though, include the decorative lines in the back, our October header, and of course, some more gold touches. With the projects list and the cover page finished though, it's time to flip on over, but before we get into setting up the monthly log, just having a look at how September was going. The theme we went with for September was fireflies, and I'm still super chuffed with how it turned out. I didn't do the same level of decoration on the weekly layouts, just because it took a little bit of effort. And with the pages of the B6 being as small as they are, I need all the space that I can get when it comes to those weeklies. At this stage, I'm not too sure if I'm gonna use the same weekly layout for October, but I do have a little bit of time to decide, so all good. Heading now into the October monthly log though, I again of course wanted to go with a calendar style layout, but this time had a lot of umming and ahhing as to whether I wanted a six row calendar or a five row calendar. Because October starts on a Saturday, this means that you have a very small first row, either one or two days, depending on if you use a Monday start or a Sunday start calendar. But then you also have a very small last row, again, either one or two days, depending on the day you start on. Originally, I had planned to use a six row calendar and just written out the Monday to Friday initials, but then it started to bother me that I wasn't gonna have the Saturday and Sunday initials there, so I decided to instead go with the five row calendar, just putting the 31st up on the top row. I know this bothers some people, but I personally don't find it to be too bad. I know that that day is the 31st, and I'd rather have a full calendar box for each day, rather than trying to split the last Monday of the month between two separate days. Again, with using the B6, if I was trying to fit two days worth of events into one box, there would certainly not be enough room to write in. You can see with my sticky note moon here, I accidentally pulled off two when I separated it from the bulk. 
which is a bit of a shame, but thankfully I do have plenty of these left to either use in my October setup or in future setups. I made further use of the washi tape to add in some decoration underneath Tuesday to Friday and opted in for the black version because I like the contrast. The decoration in the bottom right hand corner though very much mimics the one that we had on the projects list. So the banner running down the page with the ribbons and the little extended lines with the gold highlights. Again the actual drawing out of it is fairly straightforward, even if time consuming, but looks really visually effective. In terms of timing from first touch the pen to final erasings, the monthly log came in at 30 minutes, making it the quickest spread to do in this setup. Once the monthly log was fully numbered though, it was time to flip on over to my actions list and monthly review. Typically we would have a couple of other layouts before this one, for instance a book club tracking page and possibly a monthly challenge page, but I've decided that for the monthly challenge in particular, I want to put this on my habit tracker so that it's a bit more front and center. Oftentimes I find myself forgetting about my monthly challenge because it's not right in front of my face. Also, with working in the basics, which has less pages, I am a little bit worried that I'm not going to be able to fit in the entire of the rest of the year into this journal, and while I do have some plans for how to deal with that if it happens, I would like to try and fit the whole rest of the year in here, if possible. Not thinking it's possible, honestly I'm pretty sure it's just going to run out of pages, but here's to hoping. As you can see, we've brought back a whole bunch of repeating elements for this spread, just to make it tie nicely together with the rest of the pages that we have. So we have that half circle decoration at the bottom, similar to the cover page. We've got the border that we've been using on all of the pages, the same style of lettering for our headers, and the same color palette, of course. It honestly took me a good long while to figure out how to make the pages of my monthly setups look cohesive. So if it ever feels like I go on about cohesiveness a lot, it's only because I want to help you figure it out faster than I did. It took me a long time, and I find that if I don't like the way my layouts look, or if I don't think that they look nice together, I just don't use them. And that kind of defeats the purpose of having an organizational and productivity system. As you can see though, for the semicircle at the bottom, we have a very similar style to what we had on the cover page, but instead of splitting this one into four segments, I instead decided to split it into five. This is mainly so I didn't have to have a line of gold paint running through the middle of the spread. I was just a little bit worried that it might seep underneath the notebook page, or maybe I would close the page before it was fully dry and then it would kind of butterfly out into a giant smudge. Of course, I wouldn't let that happen, but just in case. <laughs> Using the tricks that I picked up when doing the cover page though, that meant that the setup of this one took less time, coming in at 41 minutes. So still time consuming, but considering it's a full spread rather than just one page, that's a considerable difference. I will say that one of the things that made dealing with the washi tape take a lot longer was the fact that I don't really have nails at the moment. Like, obviously I have nails, you can see them, but they're not very long, which meant that picking up parts of the washi tape that was stuck to the page was very tricky. So a lot of fiddling around. In terms of the actual structure of my actions list and my review page though, these ones I'm not going to be populating today, because one, we are nowhere near the end of October, so there's no point in deciding on a review structure when I'm not too sure what it is I'm going to be reviewing. And for the actions list, the structure of this one will essentially be the same as September, but at this stage I'm not too sure what my actions are, so how many of them will be monthly or one-off actions, how many will be weekly, and how many will be daily. So I'm not going to set up each of the sections until I have a clear understanding of how much space I'm going to need for each of them. You can see we're going and putting in some gold details here though, and it's kind of hard to appreciate just how shiny this is when you're looking at it from the top view. So I also wanted to show you how truly beautiful our washi tape matches the gold paint. But now it's time for the final flip through. I'm very taken with this October setup, and I know it ended up being a little more celestial than I initially intended it to be, but oh, the gold is so pretty. The contrast is so pretty. I hope you guys like it too. If you were looking for more October setup inspiration, be sure to check out the playlist we have at the top here. Or if you were looking for monthly setup inspiration in general, the bottom playlist is where it's at. As always team, thank you for watching, and until next time, bye!